Okay, is that all better? I, I try to give people a little hints and tips that I found that are very effective and can actually help you a lot with raising your snakes. One, my number one rule is before I offer food to any snake, I run my hands under cold tap water because it cancels my heat signature when I'm offering them food and they're a lot less likely to miss the feeder that's warm and hit your hands. So it's something as simple as cold tap water you know, wrench your hands off really good with it before you offer them their feeder and it really, they aren't as attracted to your body temperature as they normally would because you're not as warm as the feeder is, if not warmer than the feeder, but it's really simple, common sense, just use cold hands and they aren't as attracted to you as they are the food they're looking for. Now, I must wash, my hands are in and out of the water about, oh geez, I'd say 20 times a day. In between every snake, my hands get washed. Before I feed them, they get washed. After I feed them, they get washed. When I handle the feeders, sometimes I wear wear sterile uh, surgical gloves you can buy at the dollar store. There are a lot of little tricks you'll pick up along the way when raising snakes. It saves you a lot of grief, and it makes it a more sanitary environment for you and your snakes. But the main thing to remember with snakes is no matter what you feed them, wash your hands. It's very important. Like I said, mine are in and out of water like 20 times a day. And I've got, well now, 11 snakes. Which is, it, you know, you got to protect yourself every way you can. You know, at the same time, protect the snake so it lives a nice, healthy life. That's very important. But that's one of my biggest hints that I really found can make a big difference in whether or not you get bit. Especially if you're taking your snake out and putting it in an enclosure to feed it. But after you fed it, one or two food items, before you want to reach in there and pick your snake up to take it out and put it back in its enclosure, get your co hands cold under cold water. Don't ever feed your snakes and then turn around and try to pick them up with the scent of a feeder on your hand because you will get tagged seriously bit. But it's real simple after they're done eating when you want to put them back in their totes. If you're not using a hook, I have hooks too, but I don't use them except to cancel the feeding response. But run your hands under cold water. It's a lot better than picking a snake up with a warm hand that smells like a feeder. Just a couple of hints and tips I thought some new people in the hobby might find useful. This is how I thaw out all my feeders. I uh, use, I start off with a low level of like warm water and then I gradually increase the temperature of it as I thaw. And that way you don't, if you fast thaw them and boil in hot water, you can expect the tissue to break down, turn into mush and a lot of times that's what causes uh, the feeder to explode and their guts to come out when you're feeding a snake, when the snake strikes it. But if you start off with a gradual, like a medium warm temperature and gradually increase the temperatures of the water, it works a lot better for them. You don't have as many problems with your feeders exploding on your snakes when they're trying to eat them when they strike them. But I take them out after they thaw out and uh, fold the paper towel in half, lay them on a paper towel, and I kind of fluff the fur up on them a little bit with a paper towel. If you have snakes that really don't want to switch over to frozen thawed, a good way to do it is actually after you fluff them up a little bit with a paper towel, then take a blow hair dryer and uh, like hit the feeder with it a few times and it kind of fluffs the fur up. So it looks more like a live animal to the snake than a frozen thawed one. But I've had great results with that for feeding them, you know, switching over from frozen thawed to, I mean live to frozen thawed. You just take a little blow hair dryer and hit it with it and fluff the fur up a little bit. And it looks just like a live food, live feeder for the snake. Kind of hard to hold the camera and do this at the same time. I pat the water dry off of them as much as I can. And I just take and like fluff the fur forward on them with a paper towel. And it makes it look more natural instead of laid down and like soaked. But it really helps a lot attract the snake if they, the fur is loose and kind of like a live feeder spur would be. But yes, I spent a lot of time humoring my snakes and trying to give them what they like. And this really gets them to feed better if it looks more like a live 
food item and a dead soggy one. You know, not everybody wants to go through all this hassle, but it's worth it to me to see them eat good. But you fluff the fur up a little bit, and it looks more like a live food item. Like I said, if this doesn't work and they still refuse it, take a blow dryer to it and fluff it dry with a blow dryer so it looks like a real feeder. The scent's the same, so it doesn't really matter. They don't know the difference. They're just more apt to be, a, if you're trying to switch them over from frozen, I mean, why well, I keep saying that, from live to frozen thawed. This really helps attract them better than the soggy wet feeder does. Do you want this? Do you want that? It's just that simple. The feeder's fluffed right up. Even the ears are up in there, just like it would be if it was a live feeder. That makes about a lot of difference in attracting a snake. I mean, they're not great. You know, their vision's not perfect or anything, but it really appears to be more a life meal to them than a frozen thawed. How's that doing? Is that working for you? Say heck yeah. Let's go try to feed Crystal now. Hey, what are you doing over here? Let me take your light off, of course. I can't take your top off with your lights on you. And yeah. see if we can do it like this. See if we can do it like this. So we can see. You ready to eat? Are you hungry? Yeah. It's hard to do it. Camera in one hand. So if I get bit, it's my own fault. What's this? What's that? Shoom. That's what that food. 